Hi, I'm Tracy Pearson. Thanks for joining me for this Live with the Animals video series. So this video series started back in March of 2020 and was really inspired by what was happening here in the world along the lines of coronavirus. You know, there were lots of places in the United States going into lockdown, shelter in place, different kinds of quarantine kind of measures. And I just became really curious what the animals thought about this whole situation. And the animals really encouraged me to start this live streaming series and to share their wisdom with the world. And this has evolved over time. And here we are many months later, still doing this series. The animals are still showing up. And it's just been a really fun project. So today, our little animal friend that we're talking to is a pine squirrel from Rocky Mountain National Park. So I want to try and share this little video with you here of the squirrel jumping around because they're really fast. So take it. Hopefully this will work. Don't, 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 he's so fast, zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> so it was really fun. This was maybe about a month ago, I, a little over a month ago, I, I saw this squirrel in Rocky Mountain National Park. And if you've been following the news at all, in the last couple of weeks, there was a fire, the East Troublesome Fire that entered into Rocky Mountain National Park. And I had checked on the map and it's somewhat close to where uh, this pine squirrel lives, but didn't quite encroach on that area. So um, not quite sure what our little pine squirrel friend will share with us today, but I'm going to go ahead and get quiet and start tuning in. And if you're joining me live and you have questions that you would like to ask this little pine squirrel on Zoom, type them into the chat. And if, or if you're watching on Facebook, type them into the comment section. So I'm just going to get quiet here and start tuning into this pine squirrel. I really bring messages about being light on your feet. You know, if you could see in the video how it, it should kind of replaying it for me, how it just that jump, 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 like jumping really fast kind of motion that it does. And it's able to assess a, assess a situation and move away from something quickly that doesn't serve it. Is there more you want to tell us about that or how it might, uh, might apply to us or anything? Well, it's always helpful to be nimble on your feet. In, in a physical context, if possible, um, but also in, in your way of thinking is what he's saying, saying is more important. It's this nimbleness in, in, in your thinking. Okay. Is, is there anything you want to share with us about um, what's happening where you live right now? I know, I know you may have been affected by the fire there. Is there, can you tell me more about what's happening for you right now? Well, where I am right now is actually quite calm. Uh, life is kind of you know, back to normal, if you will, for us. And he's showing there's, there's snow on the ground in some of the places now, and there's a lot more, there has been snow falling is what it's saying. Yeah, it, it's, it's almost showing this kind of the containment of the fire that has been happening uh, with, with the snow that's been falling. Did you, like, did you sense the fire coming? Did you, did you leave your territory area or what was it like for you? So it's showing me that nimble thing again, where it was jumping doop, 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 around and being quick and nimble. So that I had my mind set to that frequency of nimbleness and there's a way of like I was tuning my consciousness into the consciousness of the forest. It's almost, so it is showing it's um, sort of this mournful sound of the forest of the trees, 
um, it's saying that it was picking up on the, it's almost like telepathic signal that the trees that were burning were sending out. Like I knew there was something coming. It's what the pine squirrel says. So I was, I was quite nimble. I was keeping myself nimble. I was ready to move at any time. I knew something was happening. None of us really like to leave our territories. Like it, it is similar to humans in that way. Like in our territory, we may have our, our food stashes and our, our special, you know, we know our routines, we know where the water is, we know where to go for this or that. And so to leave our territory, it, it's, it's similar in a way to humans having to leave their homes. It's not that we can't do it. It's not that we can't adapt. It's just that we prefer not to if we don't have to. Um, so he, it is showing me like being back in its territory where, where I took this picture of it now, but it does show this um, nimbleness of like, oh, we left and kind of came back kind of thing. Do you, is there anything else you wanna tell us about the fire? So it is showing me the fire as part of a cycle, like it's showing me this circle and um, things in life kind of moving through that cycle. Fire being part of the destruction phase. Sometimes in order for things to be rebuilt, they have to be pulled apart and um, destroyed or deconstructed Seeing it's not the same, it's not, it's not all that different from what the chipmunk was sharing with us uh, last week about that, that cycle of, um, there is this cycle of life that humans want to see themselves as separate from, is what this little squirrel is saying. And, you know, we wild animals, we see ourselves much more integrated and it's not like we're at the mercy, he's saying, of of nature, but we are, we're more, we're more a part of the, of this cycle that's ever, ever evolving. Okay. All right, my little pine squirrel friend, I, I really felt like when I saw you in Rocky Mountain National Park, there might be some words of wisdom that you might want to share with us. Um, anything in, in particular coming to mind or that you want to share with us or So again, it's showing me this, this nimbleness that it has and the quickness and the fastness. So it is showing like the, the that flight um, activation in the nervous system and how, you know, how some of us may have like judgment against it. Um, it's showing me particularly, you know, this may be different in other parts of the world, but here in the United States, it's generally very valued to like stick around and, and duke it out and fight versus running away. Like people here in the United States tend to think of if you run away that you're being a coward or something like that. But the, the this little pine squirrel is saying, there's real value to that flight mechanism. And as a whole, you know, United States citizens don't tend to value that as much as they value the fight mechanism. Hmm. It's kind of showing me, it's showing me some things about how those those mechanisms, those fight or flight mechanisms get activated in my own nervous system. And it's reminded me of a time recently where that flight thing really got activated and I ran. And yeah, I definitely had some judgment against myself for that. Felt that I should have stuck around and, um, 
So this little pine squirrel is saying like, if you want to be a martyr, that's great. But as far as survival of species, survival of um, particular race of your own, not race, um, species or um, group, like that, that flight thing really plays a role. Just showing how if all of our ancestors would have only fought then there would probably be a lot fewer of us around. <laughs> like there is real value in that flight mechanism. Okay, I'm checking for any questions people might have for a little pine squirrel friend. Not seeing any at this moment. Just a reminder, if you have any, you can just type them into the Zoom chat or on Facebook into the comments section. All right, my little pine squirrel friend, is there is there more that you want to share with us about you or anything you want to tell our viewers? Pine squirrel wisdom. So what it's showing me now is kind of like the exact opposite of that nimble, quick movement. The little pine squirrel is catching me. It's almost like he's catching me in his um, energy in this, in this place of real stillness. So it's showing me how, you know, we're, our recording date here is uh, November 3rd, 2020. And it's showing me how we're just starting to go into more into the winter season and things slowing down. And it's showing, it's showing itself as um, spending more time. It, it's not quite like a full hibernation, but spending time in its nest curled up and sleeping. It, it's it's telling it's showing about having respect for the seasons uh, showing how the wild animals have no choice but to respect the the seasons and the energetic comings and goings of of the seasons whereas because humans have we have separated ourselves in some ways from nature like we don't uh it's showing me like um light bulbs, you know, how, how we can stay up all night and work and, and do all these things because we have electric lights. Whereas wild animals have to respect more these natural cycles. And is the little pine squirrels and really encouraging us as individuals, even, even though we're human and perhaps um, maybe we feel ourselves a bit more separate from nature to really take that time to, to find stillness. So it's showing, you know, maybe this is about doing longer meditations in the morning or, or taking more time for moments of stillness. It shows me like sitting in a nice warm wrap, sitting and drinking a cup of tea and really instead of like doing a million other things while you're drinking your tea, like just sitting and enjoying the tea itself. So the pine squirrel's showing me like um, sitting, sitting in its nest, um, kind of its eyes open just a little bit, like peeking out and watching the snow blowing through. Showing how there is this like simple pleasure in these kind of moments of slowness and stillness. And as we're starting to go into deeper pockets of winter to be aware of how, how we're holding our energy and what we're doing with our energy. Showing how coronavirus is really, it's likely to bring a completely different feel to uh, winter and the holiday season this year. Uh, it's showing how, you know, like pre, there's this chaotic sort of energy that it's at least here in the United States, maybe it's different in other parts of the world, but um, this crazy chaotic like Christmas holiday 
energy that starts to land sometime in November here and showing how coronavirus is really giving us a different way to plug into that. Um, so it's showing like maybe you're not going to have your huge family gatherings this year. Maybe it's just going to be you and a couple other people celebrating. But to really take that, take it as a pleasurable moment instead of um, delving into the chaos that can really happen around this time of year with the holidays. An invitation to stillness is what he's saying, an invitation to slowing down and, and really like deep exhale. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so is there more that you would like to share with us today, my little pine squirrel friend? About anything? All right, so we've got a question popping up for you here. What are the ways that you might suggest we find stillness when we're living in such a hectic human world? So what he's showing is like what I'm talking about in this particular scenario is with coronavirus, it gives this opportunity to, to separate ourselves from those chaotic moments a little bit more. Uh, there, there's a level of, so he's showing me like a traditional, I don't know if it's even traditional, but you've seen a million movies made about this where, you know, somebody's traveling across country to go to Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner. And there's just like this upheaval and like, oh my God, I have to do all this stuff. Like he's almost showing how, if you will, you, if you need to use coronavirus and all of that as an excuse, to, to pull away and give yourself that space that maybe you've never had around the holidays and to give yourself some distance from any drama or stuff that, that gets stirred up. Um, that's really one way. He says, well, that could be really hard for some people because there are some people who really thrive on that hecticness, on that drama. And he's saying like, this is an opportunity to reframe how, how we think about it. And could you show me that again, please? Sometimes we do need the separation from each other, he says. And, and sometimes we do need to be together, but there's this way of more consciously coming together. It's like, um, it's in like, so he's showing, so instead of deciding from your brain, blah, 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 well, I should do this, or I should go to this holiday gathering, or this or that, like, instead of doing it from a place of should or obligation, there's a way of kind of tuning in to not figuring it out down here, but seeing what the answer is above. Like, it's almost like, what would your higher self do in this particular situation? Um, so the squirrel does show, you know, some people are quite disconnected from their higher self. And so this may be, my advice may be quite difficult for them, but for people who maybe do have a sense of their higher self, even if you only get a glimpse of it here and there, instead of asking the question from a, like showing it at a, like a mind level, asking the question higher above about is it for my highest good to attend this family gathering? Is it really for the greatest good of everyone involved for me to be involved in this event? Do you feel like, I know that it sounds pretty simple and easy, but that might actually be quite difficult for some people. Um, do you have any more suggestions or People really have to have a little bit of sense of, um, I hear the word self-clarity, but that, that's not quite right. Um, it's almost like a desire to, people have to have a desire to have this evolvement. He's showing it kind of like as a spiritual 
evolution. Like not everybody wants to evolve spiritually. Like some people are just here on earth, just getting along and um, maybe that's their part of their lesson or whatever in this particular life. But so the squirrel is showing like, it does take somebody special to be able to separate themselves from that hecticness. And frankly, it's not available to everybody. It's not so easy as just, oh, quiet your mind and meditate and take a few deep breaths. There has to actually be some level of like commitment to self-growth or evolution or something like this. That's what the pine squirrel is saying. Like this isn't, this isn't for everybody. <laughs> some people really actually get off on plugging into the drama or plugging into the busyness of life. And that's just the way their energetic systems are right now. It's like, it's not my preference of how to live, but for whatever reason, that may be um, something they need to learn about. Yeah, my message is really for people who are a bit more tuned in and who are able to, to feel the different places of decision-making. So he's saying, okay, so maybe something that would help some people. So it's showing me again, like this, this level of mind making decisions just from the head showing. So if people are, you know, not able to feel like they can really connect to their higher selves in any kind of real way, then connect to yourself in your heart. That may be more accessible for some people than trying to make a decision from above is making the decision from the heart instead. So it is, he's showing how there is a lot of wisdom that um, our higher selves try to land in our hearts. Um, of all the energy centers on a human, humans tend to be most connected to their hearts. They have a lot, they have a lot of hurt and heartbreak in, in their hearts and that could be it's showing like that's why some people are very connected to their hearts and why some people are very shut down in their hearts. But because of the like the role that love plays in just life in general, we tend to be humans tend to be more connected to our hearts than say energetic centers in the belly or energetic centers above our heads. So that would be that would be a better place for people to start who who don't feel those energies above or wanting to make a move towards um, making decisions from someplace else than just the brain, just from logic or something. Right. Okay, I'm doing one last check for any other questions. All right, well, my little pine squirrel friend, I'm not seeing any more questions. Is there anything else that you wanna share with us before we wrap up our session here today? Oh, he's asking me, he says, I hope you'll come back and visit again. <laughs> well, I hope I'll be able to. Uh, I, at this moment, I believe Rocky Mountain National Park is still closed to visitors, but hopefully it'll be open again. I'd love to come back and visit you in this special little place where we found you. Yeah, he's showing it. And I think the other animals who we talked to, they were there were like three animals that, that were all in this same kind of place. He is showing, the squirrel is showing how there is a real magical, it's almost like I see this pillar of light kind of landing on this particular picnic area and how, how it draws certain particular visitors. And that's one of the reasons the squirrel uh, chose to be there. Uh, people who are drawn to the light or are, are really drawn to this particular place. Hmm. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much, my little squirrel friend. And thank you so much for everybody who joined us here live and everyone who's watching later. I hope you'll join us again sometime. And until next time, take care and be well.